what have you noticed or ha maybe you haven't noticed or uh, as far as in those uh, regions of like Afghanistan and Pakistan, I've noticed there's a lot of people popping up, especially on Instagram as Instagram became bigger, uh, especially for cannabis and, and seeds. Um, yeah. Have you noticed a lot more hybridization involved, like with modern lines t kind of working their way into these lines that are being declared pure or, you know, have you noticed any I, of that at all? I sort of don't, um, I generally try and like just ignore most of the, the sort of people doing those things. Yeah. Um, but every, every couple of years I'll sort of maybe get curious about what they might be saying. And it's always, I mean, the thing is, I don't like, uh, I, I don't really know what they're up to, uh, for the most part. Um, it worries me because I suspect most of them based on what I've heard, um, have been involved in also bringing hybrid seed over to places as well. You know, yep. yeah, I can't substantiate that beyond some forum things I saw in like 2018 when there was suddenly there was a 2018 ish, there was this sort of big yes. realization among some of these characters that, um, oh, we can get seeds from these places. But at the same time, they were sort of wanting to, there was certainly some of them were wanting to bring seeds up to places like Parvati and Milana, the sort sure. of typical Himalayan areas for, 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 for charis in India. And, um, yeah. And then I saw these ridiculous kind of excuses being made. Oh, there's some kind of wind, wind, uh, climate type microclimate to do with winds that means that any pollen from hybrids that we bring up to Milano is is not gonna <laughs> just, just <laughs> fucking the most Magic self justifying shit you can imagine. And and yeah. it just uh, just after that as I say I think it, I, I wrote a kind of couple of sort of irritated things back then on the on the on the on that old blog and about the, the amount of bullshit that's spouted and and then just thought oh fuck it, it's just gonna put me in a bad mood. So I I I, I don't like going on social media anyway much it tends to put me in a negative state okay. of mind anyway so I, I i just have chosen to ignore it and do do my own thing really so i can't give anyone an informed opinion about what sure. exactly is going on up, up to a point i know certain outfits have like stolen stuff from people who supply me as in as in like yeah they've supplied like i know i know one outfit that one of the guys who supplies me has sent seeds to then they didn't pay him and they just knocked off his strain and sold the seeds and kept the money for themselves yeah um so i know there's outfits that are that shitty yeah, well, but sure. that's that's like i can only um i only know that because it's in, intruded on my world as it were i haven't sort of proactively been seeking out knowledge of what they get up to because it's just <laughs> it's not it's not conducive to being in a in a positive state of mind to involve yourself sure. with bullshit. But um, no, I mean, I mean, it, 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 to go back to the plants and stuff, like um, one thing I think is probably worth clarifying for people, um, Himalayan uh, land races, as in we're talking between sort of, you know, Nepal and Kashmir are a distinct group themselves, right? They're not Indica's, they're not true tropical sativas. They're a, yeah. another kind of group within land races that's very clearly distinct. You know, they're much taller plants. They generally are triple use, multi-purpose plants. So they're for seeds, for fiber, and for um, hashish, charis. Uh, they're yeah. not. Um, you know, they have a the cannabinoid profile is typically like a Central Asian. You know the a field of them will break down into like type one, type two, and type three cannabinoid profiles, mm -hmm. chemotypes. So they're a very distinct group. And the problem with people bringing Dutch and, and um, genetics up to Milana and stuff is you can see it's just uh, that around that area is very obviously not the same as it was even when I first went there, you know? Yeah. So, it's uh, very clear that there's that skunky Dutch kind of effect as not just a, not just the smell, the sort of effect. It's yeah, 
um, uh, I was I was there um, one time when this uh, real kind of crazy old timer guy turned up who'd brought a bunch of like Thai brick weed with him in his <laughs> from, from the, flown from Bangkok to India with like oh my goodness a, like a couple of hundred gram like brick of weed from like Kochang or somewhere Kochang and and just a maniac you know but anyway he had a bunch of it with him in this guest house and it was very interesting like smoking some of that uh, uh, side by side with the the a lot of what you could find in in money quran and places at that point yeah and this is almost, like, at least 10 years ago and you know the effect of the the stuff from around that end of parvati there'd been so much dutch stuff brought in by that point the smell of it was like that real kind of skunky pissy urine mm -hmm. urinal aroma and then the, the, it was a very un-euphoric buzz compared to what i associate with that area and then you smoke the thai stuff and it was really kind of up and zingy and then the, the you know uh, yeah it just really stood out like similarly if you if you go to areas of the himalayas that haven't had that um uh introduction of foreign hybrid seed the effect is of the charis in the sort of unfashionable bits of the himalayas to go to is is the old school real stuff that's not been obviously fucked up the effect of it's much nicer you know it's like yeah much more uplifting and positive uh feeling you know it's uh, there's there's very rarely nice. something with skunk one in it that i can smoke because it always takes me to a very specific like negative space <laughs> in my head so usually <laughs> i can pick it out uh it's taking a long time but i can pretty much like yeah pick out anything that has skunk one in it there's very few exceptions that i find something i love you know that has that in it at least you know yeah. 50 percent. yeah and a lot of the anyway the 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 the, the most of the continuations of it have been selected for the sort of heavy side of it as well so yes it's uh, most mostly in the UK, if if you, if you get something skunk here, it's anywhere. It's going to be like a Hindu Kush skunk, Afghan skunk, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so it's doubly like leaning that way. Anyway, but the thing the thing to bear in mind as well is that like that's not anyway the if you look in Afghan land races themselves, Hindu Kush land races, whatever that whole zone, they're not necessarily like that. They're not necessarily sedative. Like some of them yeah. clearly are predominantly like that, but there's such a wide a uh, range of uh, uh, phytochemical, you know, chemo type, whatever oh, that you get in these populations that aren't going to give you that type of uh, effect as well. So there's no, we're not kind of stuck with this as long as we can actually keep the some good representations of like pristine uh, uh, land races in storage. You know, there will always be the possibility of creating new things that that actually feel good <laughs> which is yeah. you know gets back to your original question of like why did i get into this and like a lot of people um the sort of standard narrative is that you know in the uk the standard narrative is oh around the, around the year 2000 suddenly all this hybrid stuff arrived and it was just too strong and it's like not really i wouldn't say it was too strong was the issue the effect was just it wasn't very fucking nice you know yeah for, for a lot of it so a lot of people didn't stop smoking because it was too strong so much as it, it was just a dysphoric effect from so much of it compared to what they were used to from the, the traditional stuff, you know? Yeah. So sense. mostly what people, people say, oh yeah, it used to make me paranoid and stuff. And it's like, the assumption is that that's um, because it's just too strong, but it, it's not necessarily that. You can have very strong tropical sativas that, um prim 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 primarily don't make you feel particularly paranoid you know yeah By yeah, absolutely. yeah yeah um, no that's that's a good point <laughs> yeah. yeah um <laughs> i don't think that's widely talked about either that's a no it's just it's it, short it, it was it's, it's just too strong that's why i don't smoke it's like well actually you can have a plenty of you know strong uh highs of cannabis that uh uh uh, 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 really nice, you know. <laughs> yeah, they don't evoke the paranoia and all that other shit. Yeah, yeah. 
general kind of grabby, dirty feeling that you kind of get. Yeah, but I mean, it's not, you know, I, again, I, 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 I'm always very wary of talking myself into a corner of being kind of anti-modern stuff, which I'm not at all. I just, uh, I, I'm, I'm just pro kind of pro diversity, pro um, possibility, which is why I, why I think it's worth preserving as much as we can of what there is left of of these things, so that there is that option in the future of taking the plant down different Absolutely. routes. There's this this a sort of default assumption that we've already arrived at the pinnacle of what can be achieved in cannabis that was so much a part of the last 10 years of cannabis discourse, this assumption that's like, yeah, you know, these elite cuts and stuff are like the yes. best vegan. It's like, no, <laughs> and they're great, they're never sure, but sure as fuck on like the, all there is to, to be, a, to be achieved, you know? Yeah. I try to explain to people a lot of the quote unquote elite cuts in the U S like most of those are picked out of two, three seeds, you know, <laughs> like yeah. in someone's closet, <laughs> like in, it's not, yeah. I mean, elites definitely, uh, it's very rare that I find any of those old clones that have been passed around that everyone universally agrees. That's fucking amazing. It's so rare mm -hmm. to ever find mm -hmm. that, you know, there's very few. So yeah, I, the, the clone market in the U S has been completely taking over lately. And with that spreading of HLV. So a lot of like the past few seasons of what I've been doing is trying to explain to people the necessity of seeds versus clones as well in the US. And mm -hmm. I know that a bunch of the Spanish seed, or Spanish clones or stuff from here that went over there has murdered some of the libraries over there of some of the old Dutch stuff that they had been keeping. Um, right. So it's right, not slowing right. down. <laughs> it's not slowing down anytime soon. And with, so, so that's very interesting. I didn't I wasn't yeah. aware that, that this is the hop latent viroid. Yes. So, so it's just basically fucked everything up. Oh it's so bad. Scenario where we're, we're paying the price of how fucking homogenous all of our yep. stuff is already. Yeah, fuck man. Yeah, it's. it's I, had, bad. I, mean, I had to talk about it, but I hadn't realized it had actually got to the point of like trashing people's collections as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, with yeah. one of the bigger clone nurseries that I know of, and they'll re remain nameless, but um, yeah. they are pretty content with three percent of clones going out with HLV because it's so inundated. Right. Just, oh. It's assumed that three percent is is the best that they can do. Not zero percent, but three percent is like when you are constantly mm -hmm. testing, constantly because they're still bringing stuff in because everybody wants this cookies renamed, whatever the new name for cookie <laughs> stuff is today, you know. And and it's still working on people. Obviously, um, the education is out there, but it's it's not being accessed or maybe you know it, there's a big difference between smokers and growers. There's a, there's a wide yeah. pool that just, it's really hard to get through because most people that I've encountered here, the attitude is, why do you care so much? It's just weed, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it, like that, hard. That's like a very standard British attitude. It's like, it's all just <laughs> weed. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 it, like um, Americans coming over to the UK are just like, uh, you know, when, when they see what's, a, a, a available to someone who is just uh, randomly turning up in England, it's, it's dismal, you know? Yeah, Even these days, unless you grow for yourself and or you happen to be in a city that's particularly like we orientated, it's very, very dismal, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, 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 I that's, that's, this, this is what I've always had in mind is that, you know, there, there is going to come a point and I had run across the HLV issue but it's not something that impacts me directly with the way I'm operating. So I haven't been looking into it, but I, yeah, it was always, it a, you know, there's going to come a point where something is going to come along that's just going to fucking decimate um, the, the situation and people are going to realize just how fucking homogenous everything is. And, and yes. it's so based on such a small handful of, for the most part, um, you know, uh, Dutch and American lines you know this you could probably yeah. count them on two hands i expect the main contributors oh, yeah. to the and, and um and 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 people don't people especially sort of below generation x don't really have any sense of that i think unless they're nerds you know yeah they have like, to be deep nerds yeah up, <laughs> yeah unless you grew up in in the sort of pre-hybrid 
era yeah. or happen to be into interested in the actual growing side of it there's no reason why you'd necessarily realize you know yeah it, sure. it's one of the problems as well um with uh, uh groups who are doing collecting is a lot of them i, I can tell are not from an age uh, from a generation where they're necessarily even going to know um, what a pure land race looks like in thailand or cambodia or whatever yeah you know something that to me would be so obvious that it's been hit with something dutch or american that genuinely might not even realize that, how, that it i've had people contact me saying hey i'm in you know cambodia or whatever i found these great plants and it's like yeah they do look like pretty cool plants but i can tell from just a photo yeah. that they're not, <laughs> they're not um lacking in the uh, afghan <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> and uh people just don't realize you know they're yeah. still they're still worth collecting so it's but it, it does it does matter the difference between them and the pristine population does matter you know yeah um there's no reason like why they're that they're not like bad per se it's just that they they are introgressed they're they're down the route of total homogenization they're well down that route already and they're not not even half as valuable as the real thing you know absolutely uh, yeah that's well put yeah so uh, you have a lot of experience with uh I, I don't, maybe southeast asian is correct <laughs> with uh thai and laos i've i've heard you know some of the stories that uh it was laotian farmers bringing down stuff to thailand is um is there any veracity to that or um it's more the um the um i mean the the thing to bear in mind is again like it's it's, it's really important like really worth um bearing in mind is that these political boundaries yeah uh a very modern creations for the most part that don't have any real significance in terms of and the culture of the plant so anyway if you picture the if you picture the the mekong kind of running from up in sort of the east of tibet down into southeast asia from you know through the golden triangle and down through yeah. thailand and now down towards cambodia all along the mekong either side of the mekong is is basically ethnic lao anyway once you get into thailand and and lao so uh large chunks of thailand are like isan where which is the famous the famous thai stick areas of, of yeah. thailand are all ethnically lao anyway so it wasn't really a question of people bringing seeds i don't think it's just that the culture um existed yeah and um if you look at the early historical uh writing insofar as there is any in um thailand about cannabis um i think there's some from the sort of 18th century or 19th i think more 19th century some of the earliest references that i've seen people find found uh to ganja and cannabis in thai literature it the the the, the thai writers are very much emphasizing that this is a lao thing so this was in the context one of the really early references is in the context of a kind of historical epic uh which is a uh, about the uh huge war between the lao uh kingdom and the thais that happened um basically I think it was the 1830s, maybe. I got it. I don't quote me on the dates, but not super long ago. But anyway, um, the Lao Kingdom's got quite expansionists uh, under a guy called Zhao Anyuang, I think it was. They got ambitious, tried to sort of seize bits of Lao, and in return, the Thais basically just annihilated uh, Vientiane and all the big cities of, oh, wow. of Lao, particularly, like literally razed it to the ground moved all of the population into Isan, into Thailand, across the Mekong. And uh, because they wanted to have more people there, because it was one of the big problems the Thais have always had is that the population density was too low for them to uh, sort of uh, tax farm the, they, they wanted more people there to tax basically. Yeah, it makes sense. For, for the state to, to grow. And um, yeah, so it was a kind of, um, 
the, the reason there's a very big Lao population in Isan is, is partly artificial, basically. So it's a lot of people moved. And um, the, um, the, the culture from a very early, the, all the indications are is that the ca cannabis is associated in Thai culture with uh, rural um, populations, particularly ethnic Lao populations. Mm -hmm. And there's a very, very strong uh, status association in the in uh, it's, Thai culture is very very status conscious. Like it's worse than the English or any kind of snobby culture yeah. <laughs> yeah. you can choose. So the, all of the politics of, of Thailand are all about the big city Bangkok versus mm -hmm. the, the the countryside basically. And so this the reason I'm giving all of this kind of context is that. It's not surprising to me at all as someone who knows these areas fairly well. It's not surprising to me that the law has been changed back in Thailand now to ban cannabis again. Oh, is so it? That's... Did they change it back? Yeah, yeah. So they're oh, going to, by the, sometime this, I forget, they've got a, a few more months, or, or perhaps, and then they're going to just ban recreational use again. It's another question about whether they'll actually be able to enforce that but um, at this stage, but the absolutely no surprise to me at all whatsoever that the, 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 the consensus has been that in, in the Bangkok elite that it, uh, this should not be allowed uh, and they're going to do what the British have done, they're going to basically copy our model of like allowing some medicinal industry that them and their mates will get to cash in on so the kind of industrialists and elite will get to make a killing out of the medicinal industry but and everyone else can go fuck themselves and get a prescription or go to jail, you know? It's so, not much different than the US. Like, to be honest, yeah. it really is yeah. how it ended up. Yeah. Um, so it's the same, it's the same sort of whatever dialectic, whatever you want to say, just because it's basically cannabis is a, is a, is a, is a peasant drug basically in, yeah. to put it in the bluntest terms in, mm -hmm. in Thailand. And Laos. That means that some people have a, some elite, establishment types have a kind of affectionate attitude towards it. It's like, oh, it's the country bumpkin kind of thing. Other people look down on it, disdain for it. Sure. And there's the definite hierarchy, you know, in terms of things like amphetamine and, and opiates and stuff in Southeast Asia that's that about elite versus rural. Poor man's drug, rich man's drugs, and various sure. in between. Yeah. Um, and cannabis is definitely the poor man's drug, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so wild, yeah. Um, it's fucked up, but it's, we always we always assume that it's like oh, it's part of the culture, quote unquote. But it's much more complicated than that in Asia, and you need to have a kind of sense of how stratified and fractured all of these countries are <clears throat> in terms of the culture and the geography <clears throat> and how that relates to to cannabis. It's it's not straightforward, you know. It's not straightforward that <clears throat> they're going to legalize in India by any means. Um, yeah. And it, it's very strongly connected to how <clears throat> the um, political establishment relate towards the uh, minorities and, and village communities in terms of how they see it. And there's all kinds of complicated ideas about smoking versus eating it and which is okay. Smoking is generally not okay and maybe eating it is kind of okay. And da, 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 da. It's, all, it's, so, it's, so, it's not at all a question that it's like, um, the shorthand that we in the West tend to go for, like uh, the Americans came and banned it, and blah, 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 blah. it's like yes, and but no, not really. It, it, there were moves to ban these things long before the um, uh, American hegemony or whatever was a yeah. thing, and 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 a lot of the 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 um, British involvement, ironically, was strongly lent towards not making it illegal because the British were there to make money in, in India yeah. and places. And the, the loudest voices who were pushing for it to be made illegal were generally Indians yeah. of a certain establishment type of, in, of mentality in India that regarded this stuff as unacceptable, you know. And that was nothing to do with uh, them being contaminated by puritanical Western ideas. These were like locally born ways of thinking about these substances that 
associated them with undesirable groups like cannabis was very strongly associated with muslim culture in india for example uh, particularly the smoking hashish was associated with muslims yeah and then in as far as it had any hindu connections it was associated often with village forms of hinduism that were seen as being um sort of folk versions of hinduism that were not sophisticated and or, or were contaminated with um uh you know unorthodox forms of hinduism that were disapproved of you know so there's all kinds yeah. of like nuances in there in terms of it um you know it's not as it's, it's pessimistic but i can't i'm not like anticipating some glorious future age of legalization that's going to be around the corner unfortunately there was a yeah. while where i thought maybe, maybe maybe because the money will decide it and then i'm like oh no it's not it's not gonna i don't think we're gonna be like living in some global legal situation anytime soon basically yeah it, it just seems like no matter what happens it's always going to be putting the hand the the money into the hands of the few <clears throat> so maybe opening it up you know built this market but closing yeah. it back down puts it back into the one percent type situation yeah. yeah yeah it's it's pretty difficult once yeah basically i think so and once it's been once you've got a prohibition scenario like extricating yourself from that you know it's not straightforward especially when there's such a strong plutocratic sort of oligarchical yeah. tendency in 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 our dysfunctional democracies these days it's like when you combine that with how difficult it is to have a sensible discussion about these types of topics in the in the media these days it's uh it's yeah it's, it's very tricky you know yeah for sure yeah i mean there's people in the usa that you know applied for licenses and because and didn't end up getting it for whatever reason and then yeah. now they're on paper and now they get rated like <laughs> it's yeah it's it's been wild yeah. to watch it happen over the past you know however many years and uh i can't imagine it's going to get any better anywhere after people have watched the rich sort of take over the whole industry. Yes, I mean, I, I don't know, like, um, I, 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 I was very sort of not optimistic, but I was kind of cautiously optimistic that, like, even if it wasn't for the right reasons, we might end up with legalization. Sure. Um, because, uh, you know, and, and, and the quirks of the political system in the States where you can have these sort of referenda and stuff referendums in places like Oregon or whatever that mm -hmm. we don't have anything like that in the UK equivalent to that. So I was sort of watching somewhat enviously and thinking, yeah, well, it's only a matter of time before you've got federal legalization. And I noticed Harris has been saying she's going to do that and things who knows, you know, I mean, maybe they will, but it does require like some courage on the part of um, people in power to actually do what they know. I mean, yeah. all of, to any of these people, they will know what they should do, and but they'll always do sort of some sort of half-hearted fudge Absolutely. in the end. You know? I, I mean, like, you know, the chance of like having sensible laws about actually kind of properly dangerous drugs is is very unlikely anytime soon, and, and particularly given that even the sort of more enlightened discourse around these things is is so. Um, incapable of you know like i'm thinking like you see all this talk about psychedelics these days and psychedelics oh, yeah. this and psychedelics that and it's like yeah okay but you know oh we're gonna just we're gonna go we're gonna go and legal all these things legalize all these things and then we're gonna leave like the actual shit like fentanyl and heroin and meth or whatever that <laughs> right. actually is really where you need to change the law <laughs> yeah if you were actually concerned about not having all these people dying and stuff uh but yeah it's like uh you know um cannabis except exceptionalism psychedelic exceptionalism and all this stuff is like uh, the, 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 is a whole is a whole other conversation but um i don't see it's going to feature anytime soon in the sort of any 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 serious discussions basically you know i i just recently learned that in oregon um because someone got busted there um seeds seed sales and stuff is is a serious felony if you do, if you're not like you know fully legal with paperwork and everything and they, right. yeah dude went to jail still in there yeah 
I, right. it kind of blew my mind because when I think of Oregon, like when I visited, um, it's it's very open cannabis wise, much more open than where I'm at in California. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like I, I'm right. in like I'm, the red yeah, area. I'm, I'm not up to speed, but yeah, it like it 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 seemed pretty. I don't know, normalized there, but uh, the seeds. If you're not legal, you know, you don't have all yeah. your paperwork in. It's a lot so, more serious penalties. Uh, I had no idea. In my yeah. Mind. yeah. Yeah, it's very tricky. I so sort of, so like, um, there's such a big gray area with all of this stuff. It's, uh, you know, in the UK itself, totally uncontrolled in terms of moving the seeds in and out of the country. Yeah. It's not, there's zero regulation on it, like, literally none, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, um, as in to, to leave the borders of the UK and come into the UK, you know? Sure. But it, obviously, for the destination countries, it's, becomes infinitely more complicated but absolutely it's 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 so um it's it's so uh it's so so sort of surreal this is the thing though i mean and i i I tend to repeat myself so just steer me onto something else if i'm getting boring sure go ahead the the weird thing is with the the uk is it's not historically actually been a country that has tended to 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 prohibit stuff you know yeah like uh, narco-colonialism was one of the most controversial aspects of our history in terms of things like opium and and all of that so yeah the colonial history imperialist history of the uk was drugs are a huge part of it the the elite discourse of this establishment figures you know the sort of liberal old school liberal kind of 19th yeah. century 18th century liberals for the most part were just like insofar as they knew about these things just didn't give a fuck it was like well that's something they do there can we make money out of it? Yes. Yep. Can we tax it? Yes. Great. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, subject, you know, and then, um, in, in, in the UK itself, like, uh, you know, heroin was available on prescription as late as the, the 19, 19, late 1960s, you know, you could so still, wild. yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, it was regarded as a, as a, uh, opiate addiction was a, medical thing the, the notion that it should even be considered criminal was completely just anathema to the whole yeah. way it was dealt with you know um so you know people like william burroughs and all these kind of beat type characters would come to the uk and stuff you know because it was oh, yeah. so because it was such a common sense culture towards these things you know yeah but then i obviously went like off the rails dramatically by the 70s uh, yeah and um partly for actually kind of historical reasons, not necessarily to do with America per se, but it was, you know, largely sort of American led the, the, the move towards a more aggressive pro prohibitionist stance. Yeah. But it, it, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, even our sort of, I think it's probably the same in the States now, like, doesn't matter how far right you go, really. Most people in in the conservative politics in the UK would, would if you talk to them on a personal basis, and even publicly now, would be like, "Yeah, of course it shouldn't be criminalised. You know, it should be yeah legal. You know, everything. You know, but um, yeah, that's wild. So much different than the US. I mean, I maybe maybe politicians on the right would <laughs> say that privately, but definitely not publicly. <laughs> definitely mm. not. I don't know if it's a it's a religious thing because our country is so religious. Sorry, sorry, what's that? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a religious thing because our country is so religious based, or or what the difference yeah. is there. I mean, it was definitely one of the major um, d- d- dividing lines between the U.S. and the U.K. was that there was a strong disapproval of of. Uh, British imperialism, particularly in Asia, yeah. you know, in World War II, the Americans were just very openly like, why the fuck should we even be helping you guys keep control of your colonies? You know, ignoring the yeah. hypocrisy yeah. of the Philippines and whatever. Yeah. But, but um, the attitude was that, and 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 it was. Uh, even before then, at the League of Nations, when the first kind of international attempts at prohibition happened, we're talking kind of 1920s and stuff, um, it was the Americans and the Egyptians who led the move to kind of include cannabis on all of the um, anti-opiate laws, which were the real driver of the first attempt to like internationally prohibit drugs through the 
League of Nations sort of pre-UN type idea. Yeah. The, it was the Americans and G Egyptians who were really led the charge, especially to get cannabis included on the on the laws. And that, ironically, that was using data from the um, quotes lunatic asylums of, of Egypt that the British had actually put together because there were kind of doctors and stuff within the imperialist machinery who were focused on this idea that cannabis caused insanity and that it was yeah. associated with criminality and stuff. So it was partly British material, like the research that supported the idea, was, was used to support the idea that cannabis might somehow make you insane or was associated with violence and criminality. Yeah. Basically because the British, even though they didn't want to ban these things in, in India, were were still quite happy to use the association between cannabis and like marginal groups you know groups of men hanging out on the street in in parks and in urban centers like laborers and stuff smoking cannabis or oh, what are you doing uh you know they were quite happy to kind of police these groups using um or you know to, to control these groups using cannabis you know so some kind of radical dervish gets conscripted into some army unit and is causing problems in the barracks so he smokes hash he's insane put him in the yeah. lunatic asylum you know what i mean <clears throat> so they were still using it was still exploiting it to control undesirable people you know yeah so there yeah. was this kind of paper trail associating cannabis with the um, mental illness that was used as early as the 1920s to <clears throat> to kind of shoehorn cannabis into the anti-opium laws. Um, Wild. Yeah. <clears throat> I could but dig yes. into this with you forever, but I, I definitely want to make sure that we go over some of what you have in stock because... Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, the, I, I'd love to have you on, you know, whenever you have more time too, because I, like I said, there, each one of these topics, like you you could really open it up and talk about it forever. And this is uh, what fascinates me. Uh, it's oh, it's nice just I know least about. <clears throat> yeah, far, far away, like, because it, it's better if you sure. if you give me some questions so that I don't just drift back onto stuff that some people would have heard me talk about before. So, yeah. so the um, let's start with uh, one of the ones I had experience with was from uh, the Highland Thai Burmese, I think it was called. When it was first released, yeah, that one's. I thought that was an amazing like uh, plant that could be done well indoor. I don't know how it would compare to you know point of origin, but it could be done well indoor in the USA. Um, what can you tell me about that line? Um, so that um, has been through a couple of like ex situ maintenance grows now. Um, mm -hmm. So. It's gonna. I and I haven't directly been involved with that since I originally collected the seeds. So <clears throat> any there may have been inevitably going to have been some possible shifts in w what it actually is now, just from the fact that you know we can't do more than like double digits yeah. in terms of plant numbers of maintaining it realistically. So. Um, <clears throat> I got it from uh, in in Mae Hong Son from a guy who um, uh, an expat guy who was based up sort of you know very near the border with Burma and there were hill tribe groups um, uh, who had got hold of seeds and yeah it's difficult to know like I I hopefully will be finding out soon based on genomics analysis of it what exactly is in the mix. But I suspect it may have a bit of hybridization with more like kind of East Asian hemp lines in there, not, not just a, a pure, um, it, it's not like a simple kind of pristine ganja uh, land race. Um, yeah. I suspect, uh, but there's a, a Thai Yai, like Shan, it's another name for them, kind of groups up in those areas who definitely have a culture of, of growing cannabis for themselves sometimes. Like it was a real problem for uh, this friend of mine, or rather, you know, not friend of mine, but a guy I, I, I met who was um, growing up there. He he would do these kind of guerrilla grows yeah. with uh, 
tropical, you know, really nice, like tropical lines, like kind of a Kerala haze and stuff. And then they get, the plants would get to like, you know, within like a couple of days of just being just right, you know, and he goes out to cut them down and he just finds some Shanghai has come and just <laughs> taken the whole lot, you know, like exactly when it's just like, a point, you know, he's like, oh, fuck. That's so brutal. Because <laughs> they really know exactly how to grow it themselves. So they're like, yeah, um, sure. they're waiting for the, the perfect moment. <laughs> <laughs> like the day before he goes out to, to get them and take the whole fucking lot. That's but, what um, always scared me about gorilla grows. Is is yeah? You know, they would, like here they say plant one for you, plant one for the cops, plant one for the thieves. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Th- thieving is is not great, but it's what it is. It's just the the um. But yeah, so I think they were Lahu, the actual guys he got the seeds from that Lahu, kind of like a or Musa is another name for them. They're like kind of a minority group who uh, are, are around those border regions a lot. They're like, you know, Hill Tribe would be the kind yeah. of time people would use. They And they move across the borders between China and Burma and Laos and places quite readily. Uh, and uh, I think they were growing and it got hold of some seeds. But the thing is around there, there's a, quite a lot of um, cultivation of uh, fiber types, land races as well in those areas, particularly because it's been encouraged by the Thai government. So mm-hmm. there's just quite a high chance that there's been hybrid hybridization between them. Like my experience of it was it was not like a highly potent compared to what you can have in land races. Yeah. With, yeah. And then, the very tall plants as well, plus the hollow stem t- tendency made me think yeah. like quite possibly there's some hybridization happen. And there's certainly other lines where that's plausible that that's happened because they are sure. grown on the same grow cycles as the hemp and hemp and, 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 and ganja are grown on the same grow cycles quite often in those areas. So there's possibility of pollen crossing between populations it's, it's so and i was just thinking about it like um asking you to explain any of the scent profiles and stuff like that but it, it really doesn't translate like because like you said it's a very plastic uh you know um, i wouldn't want to that in the sense that like um it, it, the nuance is so hard to get right i mean yeah um when i saw them like he deliberately had brought down like two the two kind of main expressions of that mm-hmm. high and high land race that, I mean, it may be something totally different from what the high and high that goes around in America under the same name, by the way, it was probably, I shouldn't have used that name for it. Cause it just adds to the confusion, but he brought down like a, a very a much more kind of uh, light green and the pur- there was a light green and the purple batch yeah. of the same land race. And the purple batch was much more kind of down the mango carroty end. Mm-hmm the smell of smell types and then the light green i much preferred was more kind of like it's really hard to describe but it was sort of citrus but not like straightforwardly it was like very kind of musky um uh it's very hard to describe smells but it was a much yeah. more compelling smell for me and i'm sure would be the preference if i was working the line was that that side of it sure um uh but you know, um, the other thing, the reason I suspect some Chinese hemp type, East Asian hemp type, is the the leaves um, could be very um, broad, not not like yeah. not like with the the indica shape per se necessarily. Although you know, I need I, I need to actually look at them again to see where the broadest point is on them. But the but they just anyway look like something quite distinct from the real kind of classic Lao Isan Thai type um, gene pool. Uh, 